Here we are with the third edition of Spaced Out Radio's True Tales. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to another true tale. This one comes from Kimberly. It's about a creepy story of having an out-of-body experience that literally and tragically changed her life. To this day, the memory of this event still haunts her. Please feel free to leave a comment below, give us a thumbs up, and hit that subscribe button as well as ring that bell, because here comes another true tale. Back in 1983, which is the year before I graduated, I'd been living with my dad uh, for a couple of years. He had gotten custody of me due to some previous um, family issues between my stepdad and myself, so I was no longer living with my mom, brother, and stepfather. And my mom and I would talk on the phone a couple of times a week and arrange to get together a couple of times a month for lunch or go shopping or have coffee or whatever. Um, 1983, I was... 17. A few days before Mother's Day, I think it was a Saturday before Mother's Day, might have been the Friday, but um, my mom and I chatted on the phone and um, we were going to get together on the Sunday. I was going to go out to meet her and we ended up arranging plans for another day because my mom and stepdad had plans to go out on the Saturday, Mother's Day Eve, I guess you could say. So we arranged to get together like the following weekend or something like that. Disappointing as it was to not be able to see my mom that weekend, I go on with, with my day and my weekend and, you know, do the typical things a teenager does, right? Back in the 80s, that was, you know watch much music, read books, hang out with my friends, do any relevant homework, that kind of thing. And I remember going to bed on the Saturday night and it was a very warm spring evening so I opened the window as I usually did. I lived in an apartment with my dad. We were in a three-story building. We were on the top floor and I've always had the habit of sleeping with my window open. So I remember opening the window, but not very much. And I went to bed and it was a fairly restless night. And I remember looking at the clock and I had fallen asleep around 10 o'clock. I remember that was the last time I looked at the clock. And around 1.30, in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, I remember my room being very bright. Like the light in my room was so bright, I thought my dad had come in to turn on the light or something was going on outside and there was really bright light in my room. So I woke up and there was a being at the foot of my bed, not knowing much about angels or spirituality or anything um, at that time, although I was a believer in God. I didn't know anything about angels or sort of the spiritual side of things. I hadn't really been exposed to it, so I just kind of took it for an angel, I guess. I didn't know. But they they said to me, I have something to show you. And they said, come with me. And I remember distinctly leaving my body. I could see myself sleeping in the bed. And I remember going with this being. And I remember them opening the window all the way. And I remember being in my astral body, looking down. And I could see the sidewalk with the grass and everything like that. And the neighbor's house across the road and the cars parked on the street and, and and all that and I remember floating out the window with this being and we 
floated over where I lived and over the various areas of Metro Vancouver. It was quite a blur, I recall that. And I remember floating over the area where my mom's stepdad and brother lived in the trailer park on King George Highway. And at that time there was the drive-in across the highway from us and I could see the driveway that we shared with the trailer park next to us because I lived in that trailer for with my family um, for a while. I remember the being saying to me, watch this. This is very important. It's going to change your life. And I remember seeing my stepfather's car. And you have to remember, I'm in my astral body. I'm definitely not dreaming. This was incredibly realistic. And I knew it was happening right in the moment. And I remember seeing my stepfather's car drive into the driveway of the trailer park and he'd made the mistake of going in the wrong entrance. So he backed his car up and, and he backed up back onto the highway. And as he did that, a rather large light blue car smashed into the side of my stepdad's Honda on my mother's side of the car. She was the passenger. And I remember floating there and I could see everything sort of came to a stop. Fire trucks and police and ambulance all showed up and I remember them getting my mom out of the car, putting her on a stretcher. Her head was in a, a, a neck brace and they took her to the hospital. And I remember with this being floating to the hospital and I could see my aunts in the room with my mom in the hospital, in the hospital bed. And she was on life support because her neck had been broken. And I remember the doctor coming into the room saying to my aunt, you have to make this decision to take her off life support because essentially she's incapacitated and she basically will have no mental function and she'll basically be paralyzed from the neck down. And essentially because her neck was broken, she was potentially on the verge of death anyway. And this is what the doctor told her and I remember seeing my aunt sort of nod her head and, and say, well, we have to do what we have to do. And I remember them taking my mom off life support and shortly thereafter in the hospital she passed away and I remember she was pretty scratched up and banged up and she wasn't pleasant to look at. She, she sustained a lot of damage in the accident. And I remember floating very quickly back to my room and the being said to me, this will change your life in more ways than you can possibly understand now. They didn't mention anything about it starting my spiritual journey or anything of that nature, but intently within me, I knew this was real and I knew my mother was dead. And I remember being back in my room and I was back in my body and I remember looking at the clock and it was about 20 after 2 in the morning, 2.30, something like that. I don't recall specifically. This was many, many years ago now. And I remember falling into a very deep sleep. And Sunday morning, Mother's Day morning, the phone was ringing. And my dad answered the phone and knocked on my bedroom door and said, Kimberly, your brother's on the phone, so you better get up. And I ran out to the living room and I answered the phone and my brother was crying and he said, sis, mom's dead. And the only thing that I could say, because I, I believe I'd already been in shock from witnessing this during my out-of-body experience, the only thing I could say is I know. I already know. And my brother got very upset with me and thought someone else had told him. And I said, no, no one else had told me. I just knew. 
a few hours later one of my aunts called one of my cousins called and told me also that she had passed away and they sent me a, a letter with information about her funeral and that I could come out to the trailer and, and get some things of hers because she didn't have a will or anything like that. So my stepdad had invited all my aunts and female cousins to come and go through her things and take what they wanted, which essentially they did. So honestly, I didn't get much. And what it, that ended up doing for me is it took me a while to get out of the, the shock of, of the whole event. It took a very long time for me to get to the point of grieving. I probably really didn't grieve for two years. I think I was probably in shock for, for two years. It was just so hard to believe that I had gone through this experience, that I had dreamt, or I thought I dreamt. That's what I thought in my conscious mind, that I had dreamed it all. And somehow I had come across some information on out-of-body experiences and angel vis visitation and I realized that that is exactly what had happened to me and what it ended up happening was it allowed me to go through the process of grieving and that took me many years but it also created an interest in me to look at different kinds of spirituality and to begin to investigate things like out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences and things in the paranormal and working with angel energy and understanding that God was a, a universal source and that there were many paths to connecting with it. And it really started my curiosity about all of this. And many years later, now in my mid-50s, I look back on this situation and I realize that um, it allowed me not only to change about how I deal with people and emotions and how I handle my life and and things but allowed me to become more open and more receptive and less cynical and so much I mean I've learned so much and I'm still learning I could probably go on for hours about the things that I've experienced over the years but I know this out-of-body experience was what led me to the exploration of all the things now that I'm interested in. I really wouldn't wish an experience like this on anyone in the sense of experiencing witnessing a loved one die and waking up in the conscious world to find out it had really happened. If you would like to tell us your story for another edition of True Tales, email me at dave at spacedoutradio.com. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. Until next time, thank you for tuning on in and listening to Spaced Out Radio's True Tales.